Our Christmas Eve gospel story comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cyrenius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. To us is born a Savior. Jesus Christ, our Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told, what had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. To us is born a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. To us is born a Savior. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this holy night, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I first need to just offer a, a, a brief time of thanksgiving and gratitude. Please um, let me do that for a second or two. Maybe a little bit more than that. To my um, colleagues, Pastor Bob Karnikas and Pastor Pam Power, for their pastoral ministry in this place and our shared ministry together, I give thanks to the staff of this holy place um, in so many ways today is a holiday for all of us and we share it together like family even though we're away from our families on days like this. I give thanks for their tireless commitment to the work that God does through each one of you. Um, most especially it seems like we're grateful on days like this. To the church council and leadership of Good Shepherd, their wisdom and insight, their constant seeking of what God is calling us to be about as a congregation is a blessing. Um, in so many ways. And to all of you who call Good Shepherd your faith home as we grow together in relationship with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ in relationship with God, um, if you're looking for a faith home and you still haven't found one, we would welcome you to join us in this journey together. Sometimes it's messy, but it's always filled with joy and we give thanks for that as well. 
In just the last month or so, through Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, several thousand dollars have been given to local, regional, and global ministries on our behalf as a congregation to serve our neighbors in need. During the Advent season, nearly 400 families in our community were blessed by our participation in this year's Angel Tree Mission Project. Dozens of children in our community have snacks and food in their backpacks during this Christmas school break because of a night of decorating cookie, uh, Christmas cookies earlier this month and pr participate with the Backpacks for Kids program in our community. And several hundred more people as the boxes begin to stack up around the altar tonight and will for the next 12 days take shape in this holy place. Hundreds of others will experience the light of Christ shining in and through the darkness of this world because of a little project in Advent that we called the Reverse Advent Calendar. On this holiest of nights, I'm thankful for you and for all that God does through you. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Throughout Advent and Christmas, we hear many descriptive words used to describe this baby that we worship together this evening. Little child of Bethlehem, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, Wonderful Counselor, Son of the Father, the Incarnation of God, God with us, Newborn King. All of these are fantastic words to describe the Savior of the world. For the last many weeks, though, one descriptive word in particular has stood out for me more than the others. Light of the world. Light of the world. Not warrior of the world or richest man in the world. Not conqueror of the world. Light of the world. I don't know, maybe I've been drawn to the image of this light of the world description for Jesus because it's darker more than it's light this time of the year on the prairie. And in spite of a long and, and beautiful fall, we must all admit that the past couple of weeks have kind of taken a toll on all of us, even the hardiest of North Dakotans. A little extra sunlight is a welcome relief from time to time from the dark and often cold and long winter nights. Or maybe it's just because I've been so overwhelmed this past year by many of the ever unfolding events that are taking place in our world. Events that seem to bring a whole lot more darkness than light, more death than birth, more hatred than love, more division than unity. Events that we hear and see and experience simultaneously, instantaneously through live, non-stop news broadcasting and social media outlets that seem to consume our attention as human beings like nothing else has ever done in the history of humankind. For whatever reason, this year, this Christmas, my hope and my prayer for my family and the friends that I love and for all of us who worship together on this day, for everyone who claims to be a follower of this infant Savior, Jesus the Christ, is this. My hope and prayer this Christmas is one of light. In June of 2015, I was invited to participate in a week-long men's spirituality retreat in the woods of northern Minnesota. Now those of you who know me just a little bit are already impressed by this story. <laughs> Pastor Craig in the woods of Minnesota instead of a Marriott resort near a golf course? <laughs> what? But it gets better because this week was as much about silence and complete comp isolation from the world as I have ever experienced in my life. No television or radio. No newspapers or internet, no smartphone. For an entire week we sat and listened for God's still small voice. And during the course of the week I was reintroduced to the great Leonard Cohen. You may co know Cohen's, uh, one of Cohen's greatest songs, Alleluia. But one that I was not familiar with before this retreat was a tune called Anthem. The chorus of Anthem goes like this. 
Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Ring the bells that still can ring. Whether you are two or 92, if you are sitting in this holy space today and are breathing, I believe that God is calling you on this Christmas Eve to ring the bells that still can ring. Yeah, some of our ringing might be a little out of tune, and for some of us, some bells might not ring anymore at all. But that doesn't matter. God comes to us in Jesus in order for us to ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. Brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter how much you and I may think that we are, we are not perfect. And we constantly try to be perfect. We constantly can try to convince ourselves that we are in fact perfect, but we are not, and we never will be in this life, in this world. And in spite of us not being perfect, there's one thing that we are, and one thing that I hope we never forget that we are. We are loved. On Christmas, we celebrate the fact that God comes to us in Jesus and embraces us in perfect love. The only perfect offering in the history of all creation, in fact, God's perfect, perfect offering to us in Christ, the light of the world. There's a crack in everything. I'm gonna guess that over this past year, all of us who are gathered in this building today, wherever you are sitting, have had the opportunity to look into the eyes of several thousand children of God this year. People that you know and you love very deeply, people that are strangers to you, maybe sitting near you right now, people that you will probably never see again once you leave this place. When you look into the cracks of their eyes, what do you see? As I look into the cracks of the eyes of God's children, each and every time I see light. And in fact, I promise you this. I see light in the cracks of several hundred of God's children right now. Ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There's a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. I don't know why you are here today. I won't pretend to know whether you even believe that God has come or that God continues to come into the darkness of this world or that you even believe in the fact that Jesus is the light that we seek. I don't know why you're here, but I want you to know that I'm glad you are. Whatever bells have been silenced in your life this past year, whatever cracks you've encountered and experienced along your journey, whatever offering you've kept to yourself because you didn't think that it was perfect enough to give to God, I'm glad you're here. And I pray that on this night, on this holy day, at this Christmas, I pray that you feel the light of the world shining brightly in you and through you. Because I believe that the only thing the world needs to experience this Christmas, or on any other day of the year for that matter, is the light of the world shining. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let your light shine. Merry Christmas. Amen.